Hey, and welcome back to our Rust, RISC-V and Orboot hacking streams here. And today we're going to look at the Vision 5 development board again, which is featuring the Star 5 JH7110 SOC, the system on a chip. And so we are going to continue from last time where uh, we got our hands on the board already, had some GPIOs working, and we already had serial output. However, something was just going horribly wrong, and we're going to see what it actually was because I did some debugging. And before we start with that, I want to briefly show you what I've now done. So as you know, I also have the Vision 5.1, which we had in earlier streams here. And so I've made a bit of a sandwich now and uh, actually, you know, stacked them both together. So, um, you know, using these sorts of screws here. So now I have the Vision 5.2 on top and well, I can just easily connect everything together and, you know, transport them uh, in a rather handy way. So yeah, uh, let me just briefly set things up again here. And uh, let's now have a look at some changes that we now see on the documentation website. So what I've opened already here is the Star 5 JH7110 technical reference manual. So that is the manual for the system on a chip. And there is something new here, which I just discovered today, just by random. And that is right here. So there is an, an icon now, a new button that is saying download PDF. And yes, they indeed now have a PDF available. So I already uh, fetched that uh, earlier today so that we can look at that. And so we can easily search, you know, without having to <laughs> sort of uh, click through here or using the search mask. Um, it's just a bit easier to navigate uh, having the PDF. Um, with that said, a few more things uh, that I just discovered. So uh, first up, they also published uh, a new release of like all their SDK and uh, pre-made firmware versions and so on. So they have new versions of the Linux kernel here, um, some changes they made in OpenSPI, something new in U-Boot, and a few other goodies that you may want to look at. Uh, however, we're developing our own firmware here. So yeah, we, we don't uh, really need to concern ourselves with this here. Now, another thing that happened, uh, which I just discovered because Jeff Geerling was actually also uh, facing the same thing. Um, I have something open here, which is called Bili Bili, which is like uh, the, uh, if, if you will, like the YouTube of China. So at least from what I know, and well, it happened to Jeff that uh, somebody re-uploaded his videos to uh, that website here and uh, somebody actually did the same uh, with mine, which is really cool so that more people can uh, have better access to this. Um, I'm not sure if the notes also made it there. Uh, I haven't really uh, taken too much of a look yet, um, but maybe if you're like in China, for example, and you know uh, YouTube is too slow for you or something, uh, maybe this year will quicken things up and uh, get you some more understanding. So this here is now all the videos we already did on the Vision 5.1, uh, the board that I have here at the bottom of the stack here now, uh, which is where we already uh, developed everything uh, up until the initialization of the DRAM. And that is something we're also going to look at here today uh, regarding the Vision 5.2. Um, with that, now I have this last tab open here. Um, this here is the work in progress pull request I have for uh, supporting the Vision 5.2. And we actually based that on the Vision 5.1 also work in progress uh, branch that I still had here and which is still a pending pull request. So there, you know, there are still a few things to tidy up there. Um, yeah, but it's a very suitable basis for us to work with because apparently, you know, the two SLCs are uh, so close to each other, you know, you can actually just reuse a lot of the code. And well, so we did, and that brings us, well, uh, to an issue that we faced, and that is what I want to show you right now. So I already uh, started taking some notes here, and I want to show you something. So we're, we're going to write a bit of documentation now uh, with the things I discovered. And well, what actually happened last time was the following. So let me show you some pictures here. So we were trying, um, we were trying to get some serial output, and we were having a bunch of trouble with that. So 
we were trying to print and at, at some point it just never printed anything anymore and so on. And so what I did was I developed a simpler function for printing, which is not the print macro, which has the rich formatting and everything. Um, but I just made something very rudimentary so that we can just, you know, print, print out the um, addresses of the pointers that we have and so on. And now if you look at this screenshot here that I've taken, you will notice something. So there are a few basic things that still worked here. For example, printing all good and the emoji, then I'm printing a number, one, two. So this is like from intermediate steps. I'm just making some prints so that I know, hey, we have actually successfully made this step and then the next one and so on. And now here I'm printing a pointer. And if you look at the address of the pointer, it's hex 080019 something. And then I'm printing the string hmm. And now I'm printing another pointer. And now it's hex 1800 and so on. Which seems rather fishy, right? So th those two here, this one digit here differing means they are far apart from each other. And so what I discovered was, well, down here, this is now an absolute address that was being used. And this here is based on a relative offset. So both of these uh, were calculated. However, this here could not be reached anymore. I will now show you the corresponding code to that. So this here is the code, which is saying we print the string one. So the or boot and the emoji is not in here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, then I'm doing a format args this year. I'm, I'm formatting the string ASD. So there is no actual formatting in there, right? It's, it's really just a plain string, actually. Like you wouldn't, uh, you would have like curly braces for actual format printing. Now I'm printing the number two. Then I'm printing hmm. But I'm actually printing the pointer of hmm. So I made a function print pointer. I will show you all of that in a bit. I just want to get to one point here. So next up, we, we see the string hmm. And now I'm printing another pointer. And I'm printing the pointer to something called ASD. And ASD is really just the A that we defined here by saying format args. You know, and I'm just taking that reference there. So by using this function as stir or string, um, I'm actually getting a string reference now. So you, you also see that here uh, from my editor. Now, this here is where I get this address which started with a one instead of a zero. Well, and then eventually I tried to actually print the string, which would now sit behind this address. And that did not work. And it didn't work, well, because this pointer here pointing to one eight something, um, that what it was actually not really possible to do. So that was in a uh, in a range in the memory that was not really accessible to us at this point. So the whole thing just crashed. And well, how did we actually get there? So now before we start writing things down, I want to show you something that we uh, took from the Vision 5.1 and we applied to the Vision 5.2. And that is the linker script. So here in the build.rs file, we're doing a few things. So we have the name of the linker file. So this is, you know, this is just uh, where the string that we have down here is ending up in. So further below, there is like a, a few, a few uh, function calls, you know, which are just um, uh, calling into the Rust build system, uh, and that's actually it. So it's it's really just like you know copying over some files, and you know. Now, if you look at this here, we declare the region and memory where we expect our code to run, and well, we're saying we're running in the SRAM, and this here is already now corrected. So the SRAM here it starts at hex 08 zero, zero, and so on, right? And so this is now where I'm referring to when I uh, note down the different sections here. So I'm saying the hat goes in SRAM, the text goes in SRAM, and so on. So now th there, is, there is one more thing I got wrong. So 
uh, one thing is the alignment here. So this here should be eight byte aligned. Otherwise, you know, you may actually have some other issues. However, uh, yeah, the address here being wrong was actually the main issue. And now if we look at, let's split this here. Um, if we look at the vision 5.1 instead, so the build RS file here in comparison, you see the S from here was actually at this address, hex 1.8 and so on. So yeah, it might be that, you know, the um, alignment wasn't even really like a problem at this point and everything would just have worked. But yeah, the address here being wrong, you know, just completely mess up the pointers. So yeah, I made this uh, helper function now. Uh, we already merged this into the main branch in Orboot and now we can use this for debugging. So yeah, the images I just showed you is what I already drafted down here in this uh, markdown file. Well, and uh, well, I will just, you know, take some notes now so that we recall uh, how we actually got there. So let's, let's say the following. Um, when running code, you may sometimes, sometimes want to make sure it's running in the, uh, it's, it's running in the expected region in memory that you defined in your linker script. If you happen to mess this up or you don't even know the base address, then the following will help you figure it out. Um, yeah, let's not, let's not do the colon here. So this here is now the code part. So this is like, you know, how, how you actually do this. Um, so creating pointers and printing them. So I created a uh, function in a crate that we have. So uh, we have this thing, um, let's actually go there. So we have lib log and in lib log, we have the lib.rs file. So it's you know just a, a library crate. And I created these functions, which I will just scroll down to. Um, here. So yeah, the thing is, um, they're sitting behind a feature, so we don't have the rich syntax highlighting now, and we got all the squigglies. Um, yeah. Should we turn off the syntax highlighting or just not care? Let's just not care at this point. So I already wrote this line here. When things go awfully awry, enter here. Use the feature equals debug feature. Well, that's a bit weird and redundant. I might need to rephrase that. Anyway, so... Um, If you need to know where a reference points to in memory, where, what, yeah, let, let's say with where for now, um, you can use the print print, print, uh, it's called print PTR, print PTR function from the lib log crate. In order to do so, add Add to your main boards cargo.toml file.
So we're not going to say, uh, but we're just uh, putting in a snippet here. So essentially we're just going to do what, um, let's actually go to this directory here now. So we're just going to copy this from here. So I have this here behind a comment. This is how it works. Um, add, add the following to your main, bo main board toggle.toml file. Um, yeah. Oh well. Um, I, I added some functions uh, to my Vim configuration so that it would, you know, automatically align things and so on. I guess that doesn't really work too well. So we're going to uh, use Vim instead of NeoVim now, so we don't have any issues. And it's meant for pros and not too aware of anything. Anyway, so yeah, this is toggle. So in order to do so, um, let, let's rephrase this. Import the log crate with the Yeah, it, it is a string. Let's write it as a string with the debug feature in your mainboard cargo.toml file. Uh, it's it's not strictly import, it's like include include. Include the like this. Log create with the debug feature in your main mods cargo.toml file. Okay, um, so this here is now example output, and this here is the corresponding org dump. So let's actually have a look at that image. I think I just skipped that here. So let's look at the org dump. So this here. Um, you know, when, when you compile the code and in, in or boot, you can just say make obj dump or make this assembly. I, I don't know. I, I would need to look that up again. So uh, we, we create some, um, you know, some assistance there so that you can just get the obj dump. You can also uh, use like, you know, the uh, respective ISA tool chains uh, obj dump, like from GNU, for example, you know, and then just point it to the elf file that belongs to the main board you're working on. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very lengthy path, so we just, uh, you know, put some helper scripts in the make file, so you can just say make option or something. Um, and then, you know, in, in your uh, respective sections, at some point you will have this year. So this year is now a part in, uh, in the um, data sections. I think it's in our data or something, or it, it was actually. So here you see, um, you know, the pointer that I got wrong here. So I, I, I was saying, uh, you know, if you if you refer to whatever this here is, so don't, just ignore the part on the right, so that is not correct. Um, it's it's trying to disassemble this as code, but it's actually strings. Uh, and Opjump is not really aware of that at, that at that point. Anyway, so yeah, this is where you can clearly see that these addresses, these are not 08 and so on. So let's actually write that here um, in the following obj dump, obj, obj dump, you can see that the, uh, that the expected addresses, addresses were the strings are being read from our array. Here is uh, here is an example example. Oh, we already have that. Um, here is oh yeah, we we actually got the code above. So let's refer to that. Here is the 
corresponding the corresponding output on the UART um, to the code above. Note that the first pointer uh, let's actually let's see what the pointers were again. The first pointer O X O O eight O O one nine D E starts with a zero, whereas the second one starts where is the second one? Uh, o X let's do that in the next line. O X one eight O O one nine E six starts with a one. The letter comes from uh, from a data section indicating in, in indicating that the um, base address in the linker script is wrong. In this instance, uh, it had to be changed from hex 1800000 to hex 1, no, 0, 0800.0. can see that the exec you can see the expected addresses where the strings were trying to be read from nice um Okay, so let's let's now commit this stuff. So let's add the images and the uh, what do we call it? Debugging MD. Git commit sm um, docu documentation. Um, add notes on print debugging. Uh, this is actually a bit like work in progress. So this is not the final thing we're going to go with, but it's a start. So, oh, yeah, um, I need to add my SSH. I just rebooted the machine recently and I don't have my SSH key loaded. Hang on a second. That is something we can change. Um, what was the password again? Okay, so <laughs> don't share your passwords, especially not with malicious people. Um, so yeah, because I just pushed that here, we can now actually look at the file like uh, right here on GitHub and see it rendered in a very nice way. Debugging.md. So nice. Let, let's proofread that a bit. So let me just zoom in a sec. Yeah, that's okay. So when running code, you may sometimes want to make sure it's running in the expected region and memory that you defined in your linker script. If you happen to mess this up or you don't even know the base address, then the following will help you figure it out. Printing pointers and printing them. If you need to know where a reference points to in memory, you can use the print, P, uh, print PTR, print pointer function from the lib log crate. In order to do so, include the, uh, the log crate with the debug feature in your mainboard's cargo.toml file like this. Say features equals 
and then you give it an array with you know every feature as a string. So you can also give it another one. So we actually uh, do have a second feature, which isn't really important here. So yeah, um, screenshot with the example code. Example output, here is the corresponding output on the UR to the code above. Note that the first pointer hex whatever starts with a zero, whereas the second one hex whatever starts with a one. The latter comes from a data section indicating that the base address in the linker script is wrong. In this instance, it had to be changed from hex whatever to the other thing. Corresponding option, in the following option, you can see the expected addresses where the strings were trying to be read from. Um, and that shall do as a draft. All right. And with that, uh, let's actually get back to uh, the real deal. So, okay. So first of all, um, let's actually have a look at the data sheet now, which I obtained or uh, the manual um, technical reference manual, uh, they call it. So this here, so this is new. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. Um, so the uh, documentation is currently like work in progress. They uh, just, you know, added a bunch of things over the last few weeks. Uh, it's, it's a bit hard to track because there is no like repository backing it or, or anything like that. Um, but, you know, I, I do notice some changes from time to time. In fact, I actually just uh, watched the recording from last week again so that I would see that difference between the website before and now. So, you know, I could clearly see, hey, this PDF download button is actually new. Anyway, so let's have a quick look at that. And uh, let's do so by having a look at the uh, table of contents here. So this is actually the same thing as on the website. It's, you know, really just a one-to-one -one translation. And I guess they actually have a, you know, some well-defined source and then they generate both the HTML and the PDF from it, you know, so that it, you know, doesn't get out of sync or anything. So they have a, a, a few legal statements, whatever, nobody cares about this document. So this here is like, you know, uh, what the different uh, icons here mean and so on. Caution, warning, who cares, like tips and suggestions. Um, a bit of a revision history. Well, it's just a preliminary release now. So, you know, <laughs> there is no actual versioning at this point. Doesn't make sense anyway, I agree with that. Um, and now here we have the large table of contents, which is actually quite extensive already. So it's, it's already two pages of tables of content, which is good, I think. Um, so there is a list of tables also, and believe me, it's a, it's a bunch of tables. So this thing here is very, very flexible in many regards. Um, this here might be overdone a bit. So there is a table for each and every register here. Uh, I'm not sure if you really want to have that like here in the list of tables, but whatever. Um, there is a list of figures. So there is actually a bunch of images in here. Um, and we can look at a few of those here. And it starts with a system overview and a block diagram. And the block diagram is actually quite nice. So this here shows you how the cores, so we have the 4-5-64-bit cores. Um, those are U74 cores from Sci-5. And then there is the S7 monitor core, also a 64-bit core. It's just slightly different. So here you can see it has the level one cache and so on. And you know, here it's it's a bit stripped down. So this is really just for, you know, monitoring the whole system. Like other vendors, for example, don't even use a 64 core. They just use a 32 bit core at that point. Um, but yeah, at least having uh, the same bit size here, you know, makes some things a bit easier when you write code for the thing. So, you know, you don't need like to have uh, a mix of tool chains and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, but both are sitting on top of the level two cache as it seems. And then everything is connected through a knock slash axi bus. So axi comes from, um, from ARM again. So ARM, the, uh, the other instruction set architecture, well, and the company behind it. So they made some very, very nice uh, bus architecture standards. And so, you know, it's also being picked up and used in other places like here in Rust5. Let me quickly zoom in a bit again. Uh, yeah, re-rendering the image takes a bit. So yeah, uh, on, on this bus, we have all the peripherals. So here we have the boot drum. So this is the 32K uh, size boot drum. I also dumped that at some point for, you know, checking on some things. We have the DDR memory attached to that, the spy flash controller and everything. 
So yeah, all the other components that you see here. Oh, but look at that. There is actually also a 32-bit core. So this here is some, I think like some uh, whatever processing core. It could be like some DSP or something. So like digital signal processing. Um, I'm not too sure because I actually don't really care about that. Um, you know, we don't really want to bother too much. I just wanted to show you that they actually have this nice image. So if you work on more like high level code, like operating systems, kernels and so on, then this here is uh, very good for reference so that you, you know, you know uh, all of the components actually in there. Um, for example, something very interesting to you uh, would be the I squared C bus. If you, you know, want to attach sensors or something like that, um, you have different timers you can work with and so on. So in uh, Orbit, we don't actually use timers because we don't need them, right? We just bring up the system. Essentially, we just write into a bunch of registers. We bring up the DRAM and that's it. And everything we're printing, it's really just, you know, a, a bit of informative or for debugging. And, you know, that, that's really all we need. Then we already hand over to an operating system. So yeah, uh, there is some uh, more feature description. Now there's the system architecture here. Uh, it, it's a similar view as above. It's just a bit more detailed. I don't want to go into detail here at this point anyway. Um, just want to note one thing, and that is down here, because that is something interesting for us. It's the DDRC that we see here. DDRC for controller. And then we have DDR5, so this is like the physical parts. And those are uh, also sitting here on the XE bus, or con they are connected to the XE bus, and they are also connected here uh, to this thing called APBS. I'm not sure what the S is for. Um, APB is like, I think, advanced peripheral bus. Um, yeah. Anyway, so. It's just a very typical situation uh, that, you know, everything is, is really connected in a way. And that is what we can see here. Well, um, here is a table uh, showing you like which components are connected how. Um, now, there is a bit of a confusion here, but let me just resolve that very quick. OMC. OMC is short for Orbit Memory Controller. So that is actually the DRAM controller that we have. And over here, we also have Orbit CR1. I'm not sure what CR is short for. Um, I, I, might, uh, I might find that somewhere. Anyway, so yeah, this is uh, the memory controller. And it is, in fact, very, very close to the one that we also had on the Vision 5.1 on the JH7100 SOC. Well, or also on the Beagle 5, if you know that board. Anyway, yeah, so you, you, I think the X marks like which uh, part is connected to what. So like the GPU, for example, is connected only to uh, these here, but not to the OMC, the controller. But the CPU, PER, that is actually the only thing connected to the orbit memory controller. I guess this is like CPU peripheral something, like the subsystem for it or, or whatever. Um, Anyway, so yeah, if you if you try to mess with the memory controller from somewhere else, that should supposedly not work. Anyway, um, now if we look at the last column here, orbit CR1, uh, here we actually see this here again is not connected, but it's connected, uh, connected to everything else. There is only one thing that isn't connected to anything, as it seems, which is called STG, and I have no idea what that is. Um, Anyway, yeah, this this here is this here is quite interesting, I find. So yeah, here here is another view again of how things are connected. Um, I guess this here is from their EDA tool, like from the um, electronic design automation tool. But I'm not too sure about it. Here they describe the boot process. So essentially, um, the different boot vectors which are possible. So there is a, a boot vector like this year when you execute in place from flash so that is possible here just like we had that on the jh7100 actually um but I, th I think on that one we were actually like loaded into sram and then ran from there but i'm not too sure um well and then there is uh, this other one uh to a whatever 
um, where you know you could uh, boot from other sources and these other sources uh, that is what we're using we're using this here so there there is like a few switches on the board for configuring the boot selection uh, yeah it's, it's described in a bit of a weird way here um, so these are uh, really just GPIO pins actually uh, which are being read by the mass from I guess and then it's using uh, whatever um, whatever is configured there uh, to boot from the respective source. So in our case, we're just booting from UART using the XMODEM protocol. Well, oh, here we see uh, E24 um, and Audio DSP. They also have their own boot vectors, uh, but again, we, we don't really uh, mess with them. So yeah, it's not too important for us right now. Um, there is something noted down here. If zip flash, so this is execute in place flash, is disabled in OTP configuration. So OTP is one time programmable. So there are like fuses that you can set. So you you know you, you can use some I don't know commands or something I guess, uh, or some some tool whatever, um, to you know configure the SLC and then you would set the fuses. And by setting the fuses, that is an an irreversible process. Um, you know, that then you um, cannot change it anymore. So they're saying you can uh, fully disable booting from uh, flash executed in place. I don't know what, uh, how the uh, how the JH7110 that I have here is configured, um, whatever. They're saying the on-chip boot ROM is 32K. Well, yeah, we also saw that in the memory map earlier on. And, and so it goes on and on. So if you want to read through all of this, um, that's probably very interesting. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to care too much right now, but we might get back to this again at some point uh, because you know we may need to deal with the clocks and there they are down here, I guess. There, right, clock and reset. So this is what we currently skip because we just continue from uh, you know what the boot drum or, or mass drum actually set up for us. So it already uh, set up the UART, right? So because that's how we actually communicate with it. So we just take over the configuration. We don't change anything at all. But if we actually boot from flash at some point, like we write our firmware to the flash part on the board, uh, then we might actually need to do something like this here. And we can use the code in, uh, in their U-boot fork as a reference. So I already had a quick look at that and, you know, just took a note in, uh, in our main RS file. Yeah, what's also nice is they're actually describing the reset sequence and the process here. Um, yeah, that is also something to read through at some point, but yeah, not today. So today we want to look at something different again. Now, before we go further, I want to show you some output that I got when I booted up the machine. And we can actually produce this today. And that is here now on the right hand side. So this is now the output that we get currently when we run the code that, you know, that is currently in the repository. You can also try it out yourself. So we're printing our boot, our crab emoji. Now that we actually have fully functioning print macros, you know, everything works fine. We're printing the boot mode. We're printing the architecture ID, this number here. Um, note this here is a bit strange. So in their documentation, it's actually only half the size, so the seven would be here, and then you know those digits wouldn't exist. I can show that in a bit. Uh, we're printing the vendor. I'm already resolving this now from the vendor ID. So when you read the register, uh, well, it's it's a control and status register in REST five that identifies the vendor of the platform. You get this number, and well, I just you know have a, a switch, well a, a match statement at some point, which is saying, hey, if you see this ID, then you know it's size five. The same with the implementation ID. So we get this implementation ID, and that means it refers to this, what they call core generator. So they have a tool, you know, which is generating the processor core. So also some electronic design automation tooling. And it's called some something called Llama uh, 21G1. So that's like 21 first generation. 21 is probably the year, and maybe this is the month or something. Anyway. Then we also print the hard ID. So currently we're running in hard ID zero, which is actually the S7 monitor core. So we could also, you know, run on any other core if we wanted. Um, I'm, I'm just going with that one. It doesn't really matter too much. 
Now I left this year to do initialize DRAM and now I'm dumping a bunch of memory regions from the DRAM controller. So uh, down here, all of those zeros here, uh, this is what you find at this address and respectively for each and every other range here. So, you know, I just printed out a few. Um, this is the, the DDR controller and this is the DDR5. And now when we look at the code that we have for uh, the Vision 5.1, we can actually transplant a bunch of that, um, but we're going to choose another way and I will come back to that in a bit. So what I want to do now is first, I want to boot up the machine and see that we can actually re reproduce the output. So I'm turning it on right now. Uh, as you recall, I always need to unplug and plug it in again. Here I actually have some switches on my USB hub, so it's a bit more convenient. Anyway, so I will now make run. So make run is building our uh, code and then I'm immediately switching over to Minicom and Minicom is the uh, tool that we use for communicating over the serial port. And the following happens, so it's transferring now and boom, you already see the output just as expected. So yeah, let's already quit, uh, quit this very quickly. Um, what, what you see here now is it's actually currently uh, taking a bit more time to transfer the code. And why is that the case? That is because now we have the rich formatting macro. So if you recall before, we were only seeing two arrows and the file was actually rather small. Now it's a bunch but, uh, larger. And if you want to know the size of the file, um, well, we, we can just uh, look at that. So that would be this whole thing here. So this is now the uh, binary, like the raw binary file that we uh, give uh, the board over the X modem protocol. And you can see it's 13 kilobytes in size. So we have 128 kilobytes of SRAM available to us, you know, and we're just using like 10% currently. So yeah, that, that's really nice for a start. And, you know, if we just continue, uh, just like we did with the Vision 5.1, we may actually also end up with something small enough so that we don't even need any like further stages or anything. So we can just immediately boot our operating system right away from here. So that is really nice. So if you have that amount of SRAM, uh, you're usually just good to go if you, you know, want to have a very rich environment like, you know, Linux, for example. Um, yeah, so now I want to switch over to something um, which Oh, this is my bin configuration I just fixed a bit today and messed up again. Um, I want to now switch to something uh, for the DRAM in it. So I already started this year uh, with a, a friend and colleague of mine the other day, uh, which is in source DRAM.RS. And in DRAM.RS, we actually defined a macro again, and this macro will help us a bit. And I will show you uh, in a bit how it works. So first of all, I left a comment up here. Um, this could be an enum, but we want to, you know, stay compatible with the uh, uh, corresponding C code. And so I'm, I'm defining a bunch of constants up here, um, you know, which may seem a bit odd at this point. I'm defining a struct and the struct is called memory config or memcfg for short. Uh, a memcfg struct has an offset a mask, a value, and flags. And well, flags are just, you know, uh, these up here. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm keeping them generic as a U8, and that has a reason, and we will look at that in a bit. Now I'm actually thinking um, we, we could technically align everything here and also use a U32 so that it doesn't really look weird. So if we, if we do this here, now we have 128 bit for uh, you know each of those, or uh, if if we like, if we, if we call it bytes, then it would be like sixteen bytes, right? So we use our favorite calculator again, Node.js, one hundred and twenty-eight by by sixteen eight. Yeah, so yeah, it's uh it's it's sixteen sixteen bytes. So yeah, eight bit in in a byte on on this thing here. So yeah, that means I also need to adjust this year, but whatever. Anyway, so yeah, um, this year is a uh, function which is creating a new memory config thing um, 
but we may actually not even need this here. Anyway, um, let's let's have a quick look further below. So this here is now the documentation to the macro that we wrote, and here we have something called macro rules. So what does macro rules do? Well, it's a bit of a more complicated language. If you will, it's sort of like a templating language, and I'm not even like fully into that right now myself. So I can only tell you that you know it, it takes an input expression and gives you an output expression, if you will. So the input expression is um, in the format that we write up here. So we give it something in brackets. Oh, and I'm actually missing some brackets here. So it's good that we're proofreading. It should be like this. So we're, we're saying in brackets, we have something in curly brace. So if you know the, um, the notation in C, that is actually exactly the same. And there is a reason why we're doing this. So anyway, it, it always has like the offset here and the um, like uh, some, yeah, the, the mask here, some value there, and then some flags. And, you know, this is some actually the same as in the U-boot C code. And we're going to look at that in the, uh, in a bit for comparison. Well, then it generates the following output. It does this here. You get memcfg, then offset, colon, mask, colon, and so on. So this is now the actual Rust code. And that is what you see being returned here. Um, well, and then we have these, uh, I, I'm not even sure if the curly braces are uh, part of the output. Uh, probably not. No. No, no, this is actually what, what you get for the output, like this here. So yeah, this here is now the output. So we, we really just turn what we have in curly braces. Uh, we turn that into something uh, that starts with memcfg, and we put the offset colon, mass colon, value colon, and flags colon here, and that's already it. And we do this uh, as, as many times as, uh, as we have uh, entries in the uh, brackets that we give. Um, I'm not even sure how exactly that works here, but whatever. Uh, I, I guess this is like matching over something in curly braces, and then for each occurrence, you, you will get this here. That would make sense. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I guess the uh, brackets here are part of the convention or, or part of how you can call a macro. Anyway, so we're calling this here. And so this now turns us into a structure like this, except that it's, you know, a, a bit larger. And now let's do the following. Let's look at the, um, let's look at the U-boot code in comparison. So that would be uh, in my Puma directory in, let's say, yeah, in uh, RISC-5, STAR-5, Vision-5-2, U-boot, uh, version 5.2, U-boot, and let's actually look at the, I don't have it in the history. Okay, so now this is in drivers, RAM, uh, star 5, and here we have a bunch of stuff. Star 5 DDR.C, yeah, let's start with that. Um, uh, let me scroll down a bit. No, this is not where I took it from. This is like the uh, main function doing everything. Um, yeah, that was a different file. Uh, let's see. DDRC, ah, I think it was DDRCSR. Right. So if you look at the left and the right hand side now, you can see this is literally the same thing except you know we don't have those curly braces we we have the brackets here um but that defines us the very same structure and the way this works now is uh, here in the c code they just iterate over this thing and then depending on what you have in those flags here they apply a certain logic and then it, it's always like to this offset from some base register that you would need they are writing something, but they read first, apply this mask, then they write back something ORed with this value. So uh, it would be like, 
let, let's say uh, we, we define a function here now. Um, uh, I don't know what to call it. Uh, apply whatever, apply CFD. Um, you, you would give it a base address, a base address that would be a uh, view size, right? So we define uh, like our base address constants as, um, as view size. And then you would say, um, well, memcfg zero dot iter dot for each. And now you give that a lambda. And now we have each of these entries here. It's like a, uh, we, we just call it CFD, right? Uh, we, we can give it a type here, or let's see if Rust can actually infer it for us. So what we now say is, um, we say read volatile, uh, let v equals read volatile, um, then we go cfg dot uh, offset, and we need to add that to the base adder, so base adder plus cfg Oh, uh, we already need to do fancy things here. So we we convert this here to a u size first. So we say as u size, and the whole thing is then a store mute u32. Now we say um, we need to apply the the mask and then the or. So we just ignore the flags at this point. Uh, now we write volatile. We write volatile. Um, actually, we can we can do this here. Adder. We can say let adder equals this here. Now we have factored it out. So we say adder again as star mute u32 and now we write back the value and how does that work so we say v and cfg dot mask and now after the mask we go or cfg dot uh, value just like that so yeah that's already it um this is a perp function and the whole thing is unsafe. Uh, or is it like perp unsafe? Oops, like this. I guess, I guess so. So yeah, um, and now let's actually see if we can already put that in our main.rs file. Uh, let's say split, split, source main i should actually go down into the directory and also close this here they already had a bunch of things open so now there's a to do to do initialize dram um, and so we can say apply cfg uh, we need a base adder and the base adder is um, good question to be honest I don't know what the base adder is I think it's like the DRAM base adder I guess I don't know uh, so this here comes from DRAM and the DRAM base I, I defined that in init uh, I think so this operation is unsafe and it requires an unsafe or function block so we put that in unsafe. So yeah, um, I think this is for DRAM base. I'm, I'm not sure yet, to be honest. So here we're saying, uh, oh, it's actually called DDR CGRL base. So yeah, I guess that's it. It could also be the DDR5, but let's actually quickly look at the U-boot code and see 
where this is being used. So this is called DDR rec CFG. Uh, no, that's like the type. This is actually the name. So yeah, it's, it's a bit confusing. If you're not used to, you know, the order of uh, keywords in a language, it might be confusing. So this here is the type. This here is the name. And this is actually also part of the type. It means that it's uh, like an array or whatever they call it. Um, but it's actually also like, this here is also part of the type. <laughs> um, so yeah, where is that being used? Where is that? You can also look at other functions. Oh, hey, okay. So uh, CFG2 is applied to the Firebase adder. Um, uh, we actually wanted to look for uh, this year. Okay, this is applied to something else. Interesting. Hang on a second. Uh, so they're, they're using this function here. This is now corresponding to apply CFG. They call it DR CSR set. Then they give it the base adder. Um, if I, oh, there, there is a bit more involved here. Segreg, uh, whatever. So where is this function DDR CSR set that is here? So they're using CSR reg. Uh, okay, now it depends on the flags here. So if you have this offset fell flag, then they're using sec reg. Otherwise, they're using CSR reg. And this is all very confusing right now. And I think I will do this offline and focus a bit more because, you know, that's like tracing uh, functions again. and. Yet yeah, it's, it's just too prone to error to do this upfront right now. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, but you know, you know the strategy and uh, how uh, we're going to uh, continue from here now. All right. Anyway, um, so we've uh, we've been going for about an hour now, I think. And let's see if there is something else I want to point out today. So. Um, yeah, we, we could actually have another quick look at the memory map here uh, because that's like, um, you know, where, where we actually have those base addresses. So I, I just want to um, confirm with you the base addresses that are copied from here. So we have something which is called uh, DDRC down here, I think. Here is DDR5. So, okay, let's go with that first. DDR5 is one three oh oh quad zero so we should have the same constant and so that would be um one three oh oh quad zero okay that looks good now ddrc i think they just call it ddrc do we see that is that like on a different page oh i i know i know i think Ah, right. Down here it is. So it's at 1570 quad zero. 1570 quad zero. Right. And now let's see if we actually find the same addresses here also in the U-boot code. So we should. Um, it might be that it's uh, written a different way. Um, but apparently it's not in this file here. So yeah, that is part of, you know, tracing everything. So let's do the following. Okay, let's actually, let's actually go to the U-boot directory here in a different uh, window. So let's go to firmware, red five, uh, sort five, vision five, two, U-boot. And uh, we have it in um, drivers, uh, not, not DDR. It's a bit confusing. So in U-boot, there is a DDR directory and drivers in the RAM directory. Our code is in the RAM directory. I'm not sure if they want to merge it or, so, or something. So let's search for this thing here. Um, yeah, this might or might not be written with like an underscore or something. And it looks like it's not in there. Um, 
Huh. Interesting. So it should be somewhere else. And uh, for to figure that out, um, I actually have something else we can do. And that is the following. I made a I made a uh, uh, very helpful file here. It's called diff.stat. So what I did was I took the diff from their U-boot fork and the upstream U-boot. So I you know just looked here in the Git history and I checked, hey, uh, where do they actually fork? And that was right here after Tom Rini's commit here in 2021. So yeah, they, they forked from this revision. So this here was the first commit. So my diff goes against uh, Tom's base commit here. And this is really just the diff stat. And now in the diff set, we see the files that were actually changed and how much were, uh, how much code was put in there and so on. So we're looking for some header files now because header files is where uh, constants are often defined in uh, C projects. And let's see. So um, there is like, what do we have? We have configs, right? Uh, it, it could be in the config file, so let's look at that one. Do we have this? Uh, do we have something, DRAM something? We have a bunch of stuff here. Um, so we were looking for this here. It's not in there. So I guess we will find it in the uh, board or, well, not, not in the board, but actually oh, it could be here somewhere. Uh, not in the DTS, but here, there, JH7110 regs. Um, actually, let's look at the whole directory. Oh, we don't have that in there. Oh, that is interesting. Oh, that is just include asm. Um, then let's look at the, oh, there is also this here, dram.c. It might be in there. So let's look at the architecture directory uh, in CPU. Okay, we don't find that in there either. Um, okay, then let's do the following. Uh, let's look again where they forked. Let's actually search in the diff and uh, then we will find it. So yeah, we will say git diff this year. And now we search for 1570 uh, this year. And here we go. Look at that, DMC. I guess that is short for DRAM controller. So this year is like, I'm, I'm not sure what this is supposed to mean. Uh, it might be actually be that I'm looking at something else here. I don't know. Uh, let's let's continue the search. Do we have another occurrence? No, we don't. Oh, um, right. Let's let's look for something like this here. No. So I guess then this here is it. Um, there is a clock frequency. 2133, three. that is a, I guess that is for the DRAM then. Hmm. JH7110 DMC. Yeah, let's actually look at, uh, there must be binding somewhere, right here. That's it. Okay, so this is indeed the DRAM control that we were seeing. So this file here is the, um, this is essentially parsing like uh, a part of the device tree. So this is uh, this is actually the ddr.c file. So this driver is now reading from the device tree, the base address. Um, yeah, this is why it's a bit hard for us to trace everything, right? So it's defined here and there, and then there is intermediate formats and so on. Um, yeah, th this here is a much more complex project than Orbit, so yeah. I'm not saying that this is a bad thing to do. It's, um, you know, it's, it's just, if you need to deal with this, it's a bit more complex. 
So anyway, um, so we should, so we, we, we should get information from this thing. And yeah, there is this here, get info. So there is this function, star 5 dr get info this year. So it gets a u device dev thing. So this is like, I think it's like a node in the device tree or something, uh, a ram info struct. Well, um, and that it then says dev get priv. I'm not sure if that is like private or privileged, whatever dev. So it's looking at this year and then it's writing that back into info. So this year, so it's saying info equals priv info. So it's literally just shoving things over from here to there. Okay. So now in, uh, in, in info, we now have the values from that node in the device tree. So let's look at that again. So what was the name of the, right. So there is something called Greg. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really not too familiar with uh, how all of this works. So bear with me. Um, anyway, we're going to look at this uh, thing here now. And I guess this here is, yeah, this is where they also pass on the device and so on. And this is the ddr.c file. So oh, we already have that open. Right here, actually, this is it. Okay. So we are looking for, uh, what was it called again? We're looking for this year, JH711ODMC. We're looking for, no, JH711ODMC. Not found. Oh, that is actually not the file. Whatever, then we had it open somewhere else. It's, let's just open it read only. So we're looking for this year, right? Okay, so we're saying get info. Now we have it in info and this info thing, which is here. So get info uh, is part of star 5 dr ops. So this is from here. This is now hooking into the driver mechanism. So there is like, uh, like in, in operating systems and, and kernels, uh, generally, you, you know, you have some driver model and you know, the way this works here is like yeah, each driver has like a name ID, uh, OF match. So OF here is short for open firmware. So that is where device tree comes from. The device tree standard was like an IEEE standard coming from the open firmware, uh, IEEE something, I forgot the number. Um, so match is this here. So star five IDs, that is this struct that we saw here. So, you know, where, where it says compatible equals, and then we have the similar uh, string in the uh, device tree on the side here. Um, so this is how uh, the matching works. And so then there is ops this year, there is probe, and then there is priv auto. I, I guess that is something from uBoot. I'm, I'm not sure how, uh, like what it, what it's short for, if it's private or privileged, I, I would guess it's private at this point anyway. So yeah, let's look at the, um, let's look at the ops thing again. So there is DDR get info, DDR get info is this year. Okay. I guess you just need to call that thing and call this get info or whatever. And that's it. Um, Ram ops. Okay. Whatever. Now we have, um, the probe function. So let's look at the probe function. It says, um, priv equals dev get priv. Okay. So this now has the, um, reg, like the register thing that we saw, I guess somewhere. Oh, look, there is control register file register. Mm hmm. How does, how does this work? So they're saying dev read adder index dev zero. Oh, look at that. So if we, if we look for this thing again here, this, 
Um, let's actually let's actually copy this over so that we know what it's referring to. Um, for reference, we're looking at this here. make this a bit nicer yeah whatever it's readable enough so anyway um yeah whatever just write to the file uh this is just our personal notes anyway so when this is saying dev read adder index i suppose it's reading this here and then it's saying dev read adder index and that could be that thing here or this here so oh i guess it's actually like this one and the other oh uh and we are missing something here where does the 1000 go this year i guess i just accidentally uh, deleted that anyway um yeah this is interesting so we have these, right. So this year, one five something is zero. That is then CTR reg, a CTRL reg, so the control register. And that is the same that we have here, 1570, 1570 for zero. Okay, so we're, we're aligned here already. Okay, now this year is interesting. Um, they are reading the clock frequency and the clock frequency is this year so we may as well copy that over so we shall we shall say pub const dr let's go with frec for frequency that is u32 equals this year okay um right so i guess def read 30 uh, u32 is coming from like some generic uh, urit functions and i would expect the same for uh this year yeah it's, it's not in this file okay so there is reset get by name so i guess you you would have some like semantic functions for dealing with um different uh types of definitions here in device tree so we have reset names xe osc apb um so this is a bit like a sanity check so it's really just checking if those values are there i suppose and I'm not even sure if they're like used for anything. Anyway, um, yeah, I guess those are fine. So, right, now we're saying prep info base is GD RAM base, and then we have info size equals GD RAM size. So uh, where do those come from? That is a very, very good question. So we have info priv info do we get that from here is that defined in this file here huh. oh we, we actually did that at this point here info equals priv info info i don't know where priv comes from actually it's, it's a bit confusing Oh, wait, actually, uh, it's actually a bit different. So we need to look for this year. We need to look for GD. Where did GD come from? What? Um, that appears to be something more global. So I'm, I'm searching in the whole file and these are the only two occurrences. So um, whatever. 
I guess we just don't care for now. So we know the RAM size actually. So I think I have like four gigabytes on this board here. Um, I, I would just need to check the part again. So I just got the cheapest version available. It was actually the only one. Um, and I guess the frequency will just be the same. So now they're saying rate equals. So depending on the frequency, uh, yeah, I, I would just hard code that for now. So we're saying pub cons DDR uh, rate Q32 equals this number. Does that fit in the U32? Amazing. Whatever. Okay. And now comes the fun part. Uh, DDR rec set bus, DDR bus OSC diff 2. So this is like for the oscillator, it's like some divider. And I have no idea where this is coming from. I would guess it's from some header file or something. Um, oh, or it might come from here. I mean, we, we can just search in the diff. So it, it will surely be somewhere in the diff. So this here, there, okay. Look, it's a defined constant. And this here is a header file for sure. Yeah, this is the star five DDR header file. Mm -hmm. So we get that thing. Um, yeah, we, we will need to look at for like what bus is, for example. So bus is, I, I guess that is also defined in here. Bus, something that is just called bus, nothing else, just Where did bus come from? A uh, lot of lot of buses here. Oh wow! Could also be from U-boot somehow. Maybe, possibly. Well, too many too many buses to search for. Yeah, I guess this is one of the uh, many things I really need to focus on and dig through all the files in order to figure out what this is and where it comes from. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like there is no chance to figure this out right now. Anyway, um, so they're saying DDR CSR boot and now they're passing CTR ah, control rec then control rack plus sec control adder and then the fire rack and a size whatever the size is now uh anyway and bef oh before doing all of this here actually they're calling these three functions and this is now very similar to what we had for like the previous uh soc the jh7100 uh that was like ddr fight train now there is something called util. I don't know what that is supposed to mean now, but we, we had something in that direction. We also had like multiple functions. There is something called start. So we, we also had something called start for sure. Now this here is interesting. They call it sec control adder. Oh, I thought it would be for security something, but it might actually be secondary. So that is probably also in a header file somewhere. Right, so sec control adder is the control register plus this here. So uh, let's unlock this a bit. So we're saying pub const ddr sec control base is a u size, and that is the ddr control base plus hex 1000 all right yeah I'm, I'm not sure why they call this here boot ddr csr boot i'm not even sure what the csr here is for it's very very certainly not the csr that we know from um uh, from uh, risk 5 so in risk 5 there is csr for control and status register and that is like 
a different sort of register. So you, you know you have like the temporary registers, the argument registers, and so on. And CSRs are like you know specific uh, registers for doing changes somewhere in the platform. There can be vendor defined ones, and then there are like some um, some generic ones like. You know the ones identifying the platform for example the vendor architecture and implementation id uh, those are actually also um, uh, csrs anyway um yeah so yeah I, I will need to dig through those things here again and uh, once again they're doing this year so there's a <laughs> firebase editor like this year but that is actually not what they're using here they're now just shifting it by two um yeah, uh, that that is always a bit annoying. So it's actually not hex eight hundred. It's actually like uh, twice that. So it's actually like hex two thousands. Um, yeah, I don't know why they have to do this. I don't know why they just why they don't just put the number here. Like whatever. Anyway, um, oh, and they're actually doing that also with this year. Are they also doing that with a sec secondary control adder? Uh, well, apparently not. Anyway, oh, this here is also interesting. Um, CRG 1302.0. I think I also have that here, right? So CRG base. So CRG is the control and reset gating. I think we find that in the documentation. Um, clock and reset. So I told you we need to look at that uh, again at some point. Um, pin list. Oh, sorry. Uh, reset source, reset sequence, registers, clock specification. No, not what I was looking for. CRG. Oh, I think that was actually somewhere else in. Uh, where was it? Oh, system control registers, right? So sys C R G, uh, C R M system control registers, uh, and yeah. I think this is actually like clock reset and gating because all of this here is like around clocks and everything. Anyway, um, yeah, we're not going too much uh, in detail with that. I, I hope that was, um, e even though it might have been a bit deep and confusing at this point, I hope that was a good dive into what we're dealing with now. So I, I showed you today a bit like how all this logging thing now, uh, you know, how I uh, use that for debugging our addresses and uh well you know the the address i got wrong in the linker script uh figuring that out um i gave you a, a glance at how this uh, dram setup here roughly works so we looked at the reference implementation in uboot and you know we're doing the very same thing now um there is one last thing i want to quickly look at with you in the manual and that is now in the sci-5 core manual um because it's something we also looked at in, in the print today. I haven't really, um, I haven't really uh, shown you here uh, the reference where I took the information from. So uh, I was printing the, uh, the platform information, right? So let's see where this is defined in here. Um, I think it's... Uh, Good question. Where did they actually put it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we, we can just do the following. We, ch we can just search for mimp id. Uh, there is no further occurrence, but two of them. So there is this year and this year. So uh, this year is the table where I took that name from with the llama that you saw. So it's this one here that we're getting with a 427 in the end. So it's 21G1020 Lama 0200 General. Whatever. So they apparently have like Koala, Lambda, uh, Lama, Mongoose, 
uh, Narwhal will be the next one after Mongoose. And I guess they're already working on a uh, successor again. So yeah. Um, anyway, so I guess these are the years like uh, 2019, 2020, 2022. Now, if uh, in, uh, I, I think for the JH7100, we had something up here. It might have been a koala or some of these here even. I think it was actually one of these here. I'm not too sure. Anyway, um, now you know where I get the information from. And in the same fashion, uh, we also have the vendor ID here somewhere. Where is the vendor ID? There should be M vendor ID. M vendor, M vendor ID. Nope. M vendor ID. The value in M vendor ID is 489. So that is hex 489. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, there is, a, there is a few places where they uh, document the implementation ID. So I, I looked at something else. Anyway, yeah. And this here is the thing I uh, told you, which I found a bit weird. So here they're saying the value would be 8 then six zeros and then a seven. However, in the log that we had, uh, which we no longer see, but anyway, so we had eight and then uh, 14 zeros and then a seven. So it was twice as long for some reason. Anyway, um, that shall be it for today. So thank you again very much for tuning in. Um, yeah, we'll put the notes and references again in, uh, in the notes here. And until next time, take care and goodbye.